morning, everyone. It's a blessing to see everyone. Uh, let's get started with our announcements. Uh, a couple things first today. Uh, ladies, 3 o'clock here at the building. We got the hen and chick as you can walk in. You've seen it's been prepared. Uh, there was a lot of time in preparation for that, ladies. And, and I hope you all just have a wonderful time and enjoy this evening. Because that's a blessing. That's a blessing to be, that you can be part of that. Men, uh, brothers, we got a coming event Thursday. It's going to be at Stacy's house. Uh, brothers, I'm going to tell you, if you had never had Stacy and Lynn's cooking, you need to be there because it's good. They do a great job at that and a great job of hosting. Also, this next Sunday afternoon, we got the barbecue uh, lunch. That's going to uh, help the Panama missions. Um, there's a sign-up sheet out back. <clears throat> if you would, sign up. And uh, if you needed a go box, guess what? We'll make that happen. You know, if you can't stick around. But uh, that's, that's going to be a great effort uh, this summer is uh, help spreading the gospel in Panama. Uh, this, is a, this is a blessing to us. And we can all take part in this, uh, raising funds. You know, that's the kind of the hardest part sometimes. But uh, there's those willing to go and stay in the homes and, and, and be part uh, of this mission. So uh, think about that. And next Sunday, uh, like I said, instead of going somewhere and grabbing something, you know, if you'll sign up, guess what? We can be part of this mission. And that can be a blessing to all of us. God has truly been a, a great blessing to us. Uh, also, one other thing, Monday at 6 o'clock, every year we have an opportunity to meet over at Shields Elementary over here off of Ovilla Road. And what that time is for is prayer. It's to pray over the teachers. It's to pray over the children as they go through these testings, you know, there's different places that people go, but one of ours has been kind of directed at Shields because they're, they're close to us in this community. So at 6 o'clock, uh, I know Donna and I can't be there because we got a school board meeting. But, um, and I hate to miss it because I love this. It's a great opportunity to go in and take time and pray. Pray for the teachers. Pray for the school. Pray for everyone involved in our community. And it's an, out, it's an outreach, and you can be part of it. So take, think about that, and, uh, um, and, and, you know, you can enjoy. Uh, also, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, you know, we have our uh, Bible study here. We we'll always have a great Bible study, so come and be a part of that. Uh, as you'll see in the announcements, uh, there's others that are in need of prayer, think about those we got like roger you know we need to be thinking about there's so so many that we can pray for we can bless we can uplift put them before the lord just like you did for me just like you did for me we can be part of that sorry we can be part of that because that is a blessing in our life let's take time to go to the father Father, we just come before you this morning. What a blessing. A blessing to be able to come together like this, Father. To, Father, to come and praise your name. Sing praises to you, Father. Father, to lift you up. To lift our Lord and Savior up, Father, our spirit. Father, we're so blessed to be able to gather like this. To take time to come together. To understand. To learn. Father, to gain that knowledge, that wisdom that guides us through our life, Father, that we can turn around and touch someone else, that we can just say, I want to tell you about my Lord. You give us those doors, Father. Let us step through them. Let us open up to who we are. We are your children. We are your followers. Thank you for that opportunity. 
Again, Father, what a blessing it is to be here. Everyone that sings this morning, I hope they just open their mouth wide. And Father, lift up their voice to you and praise, praise your name. Father, we are so, so blessed to be a part of this family. Father, we thank you so much. Father, and let us never forget this day, the first day of the week, that you allow us to get together and remember our Lord and Savior, what he did for us. And it's only through him, Father, that we know we have an avenue to you, Father, that we can be called your children. Father, to be a part of the family. We love you, Father. We love our Lord so much, and we love our spirit. But, Father, I know I always want to come to you in my Lord's name, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Morning, church. Let me get my eyes on it. First hymn is a common love. Sing it with gusto. <laughs> a common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior. A common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary. A common hope for tomorrow. A common joy in the truth. Next hymn is it, is it for me? Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy breath? For me so weak and simple, oh, shall I be so
to this hymn where we'll have our scripture reading. Scripture reading this morning will be from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 24 and 25. It says, For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower fails, or the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. Redeemed now I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through his infant and mercy, his child and forever.
To this next hymn, we will be served communion. Glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, Let's pray for the bread. Dear Lord, as we come before you now, gather around your table, Lord, as we partake of this bread that represents your son's broken body on the cross. We thank you so much for sending him for all of us, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you again, Lord, thanking you for the sacrifices that was made on our behalf, Lord. As we partake of this cup that represents your son's blood that he shed for us, that represents the new covenant, Lord, that he did this for the forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord. We ask that we partake of this cup in matter pleasing unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we are such a blessed people, Lord. Everything we have comes from you. We are so thankful for all that you do for us, Lord. And at this time, Lord, we ask that we examine our hearts and give generous back unto you so that we can further the works of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In a few minutes, when it comes time for our greeting, we're going to do two songs first. I want you to look back at the back table. There's a pile of blankets that these 
uh, teens have made for those of us who are more advanced in years. <laughs> so we can stay warm when it gets cold. And to the teens, Amen. thank you so very much. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> My grandson said he agrees. This next hymn, Safe in the Arms of Jesus, will do two verses. <clears throat> Safe in the arms of Jesus, save on a gentle ago, Michael mentioned to me that some of these songs we haven't sung in a while, and this is one of them. Typically, this would be considered a song at someone's passing. One of the reasons I, I selected it besides loving the song, I recently found out that one of my maternal cousins passed away. She was only 106 and a half. She was a feisty old gal. <laughs> Very much so. Let's stand for this hymn and then we'll be have our time of greeting. Each step I take, my Savior goes before me, and with his loving hand, he leads away. And with each breath, I whisper, I adore thee, oh, what joy to I know that he will guide me 
trust in God, no matter come what may, for life eternal is in his hand. He holds the key that opens up the way that will lead me to the promised land. Each step I take, I know that he will guide me to higher ground. He each other.
I'm not getting any. Oh, there. Okay. Thank you. Let's be opening up our Bibles to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Everybody glad to be here? Beautiful day out. Finally getting to those days where they're warm and pleasant and blue sky, and that's a gift. Let's go to God in word of prayer, and then we'll get started in our lesson. Dear God and Father, we're so grateful for the morning. We are grateful to be here to be reminded of you and your Son and the Spirit. Father, we're grateful to be reminded of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And Father, it's my prayer this morning that for each one of us here, we never, ever forget what Jesus did. That there's not a day, an hour that goes by in our lives that we're not constantly thinking about what he did on the cross and thinking about his resurrection. And Father, we want that to be our minds because that helps us live day to day. And it can help us overcome our worry or overthinking, whatever. Just fill our minds with Jesus. Father, now as we get into your word, I pray that we will come to know him more and be more like him for our time in your word today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. The two words on the screen, let go. What's going on inside your stomach right now? For a lot of people, we hear those two words, let go, and what happens? Boy, here come the gymnastics, the butterflies, and then our mind starts going, and we think, Oh no, what does he know about me today that I didn't think he knew? And I know y'all well enough to know some of you are thinking that right now. What is he going to talk about? Now, before we move on, I want to say this. We're talking about letting go today. And some simple things, how to move forward. Letting go can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. And sometimes the things that we need to let go of are things that are emotionally, mentally deep inside us because of something that may have happened, something traumatic in our past. If that is where you're at, and we talk about letting go today, I'm not trying to give you three easy steps to let go so that everything's going to be wonderful when you walk out of here. But what I am saying this, be encouraged by what you hear today. And if there's something deep inside that you have trouble letting go of, seek help. And if that means seeking professional help, seek professional help. There is nothing wrong with you and I needing to go talk to a psychologist or a counselor and to spend some days, weeks, months with them, letting them help us process some things so that we can let go. Because there's any number of us here in this room right now that have done that very thing in order to be able to let go and move forward. So if you're dealing with something like that, seek professional help. Seek godly professional help. Just because someone has a little shingle outside their door that says counselor, psychologist, that doesn't mean a whole lot. Find someone who has a strong, firm conviction of the Word of God being the source of the help you need. But if you need that help, get that help. I encourage you to do that. Now, letting go. The next picture. Letting go, but I might need it later. Do just let it go. 
The guy pulling the rock. Let's see hands. Let's see hands. <laughs> How many of us hold on and hold on and hold on because we never know? It's like all the drawers in our kitchen and in our dressers. We don't keep socks and underwear in our dressers anymore. We keep all this stuff that we might need one day. Hands again? Yeah. Emotionally, mentally, how many of us hold on to things that we need to let go of? This is where we're going today with this, learning to let go of some things that we just need to let go of. John chapter 8, let's begin reading. They went each to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the oldest ones. And Jesus was left alone with the women standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord, and listened to Jesus' words to her. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. Now I'll be turning to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Sister, where you're at right now, I've brought you to a place of letting go. Don't go back and hold on to what you just came out of. Go and sin no more. Let go and move forward. Amen. Jesus' simple instructions to this woman. Let go and move forward. Paul, writing to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. What did Paul say here to Timothy? For this reason, we have a new little glitch in the system for this reason fan into flame the gift of God which is given you through the laying on of my hands Paul writes to Timothy and he says Timothy 
your faith. It's genuine. It was given to you by a grandmother and a mother who had faith. It was given to you by my teaching. Now remember that gift of faith and don't be afraid. Don't be timid. Don't allow others to control you. Move forward. Put this behind you, this fear you're experiencing, this lack of control, and move forward. Amen? Jesus taught this. Paul taught this. Let go and move forward. Numbers chapter 11, Moses is dealing with the people of Israel. He's brought them through the Red Sea. They've seen the ten plagues. They're now in the wilderness. They're wandering, and they're wandering now because of their lack of faith. Instead of going to the promised land, the border of the promised land, and moving forward and taking the land, they let fear take over. And now they're wandering in the wilderness, and they reach this moment in time where there are some people among them that Scripture calls the rabble. These were not nice people, but they were people that the Israelites asked to come up with them out of Egypt. And God says they're rabble. They were not my people. And these people began to complain, which meant the Israelites began to complain And God has been providing water and manna and quail. And the people reach this moment in time there in Numbers 11 where they're saying, Moses, we don't like this. And here's why we don't like it. We remember Egypt. And in Egypt, we had fish. And we had leeks, and we had garlic, and we had onion. In a modern day translation on that, you can't believe the fish stew we made with that and how good it tasted. And look what we have now. And how did God deal with that when those people went back to try to hold on to what he had said let go of and come to a promised land. Leeks, onions, garlic, fish, compared to a land flowing with milk and honey, cities that you did not build, farms and ranches that you didn't build, cattle that you didn't buy, And because these people were holding on to what had been, God couldn't move them forward. And in this instance, you want to see a good example of how God likes people that complain and hold on to things? His anger burned deeply within himself. And the people begin to die there on the spot in the wilderness because of his actions against them. God's message to those people, let go and move forward. And how many times is that the message that we read in the Old Testament and in the New Testament? What did Paul say in 2 Corinthians chapter 5? If anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? God's plan for you and I through Jesus Christ, let go and move forward. And that message is the gospel. That message is what God wanted for you and I. In fact, in Philippians, let's go to Philippians chapter 3. 
Philippians chapter 3, and let's read here. Paul writing to his people in the city of Philippi. In beginning verse 12, here is what he says. Not that I have already obtained this, or I am already perfect, but I press on, I move forward to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, and what does he say next? Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think in this way. You talk about maturity in Christ? Letting go and moving forward. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Now what's Paul saying here? He's agreeing with Jesus. You remember Jesus' words? Anyone who puts his hand to the plow and what? Looks back. Is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. So the simple message to you and I today. Does anyone here hold on to the past? Anyone here holding on to something that you really need to let go of? What's God's message for you? Let go. Let go. Because here's the danger of not letting go. When we hold on to the past and we don't in faith move forward, and you remember what Paul said about faith in Hebrews 11? Without faith it is what? Impossible to please him. He who would draw near to God must believe that he exists, and he rewards those who diligently seek him. People who are willing to diligently let go and move forward in faith and follow Jesus. And when we choose to hold on and not let go, here's what we're doing. Holding on and not letting go. I'm worried about what someone has done to me. Am I right? I'm worried about what someone has done to me. And I'm not going to forgive them. I'm not going to let go. I will remember this till the day I die. And does that thought move me forward? Closer to Jesus? Closer to hearing, well done, good and faithful servant? Or does that thought keep me stuck? It keeps me stuck. And stuck is a terrible, stinky, moldy, greasy place to be. Amen? Stuck is of the devil. It's not God's plan for us. But when I get to thinking about the past and holding on, ah, here's what they did to me. But then if that wasn't bad enough... Then I start thinking about what I've done. Anyone here have a glorious past you'd like to let go of? You ever notice how the devil comes up and keeps throwing that past at you? Something that Jesus has already forgiven you of, and yet because you're stuck, you won't let go. Where does your mind go? Well, I get tired of thinking about what other people have done to me. I'll just think about what I've done. Anyone here ready for them this morning to put your whole past up on the screen so we can all see it? No hands? No takers? We spend enough time there, don't we? And when I get focused in on what I've done, what happens to my faith? What happens to my hope? What happens to the assurance of my salvation? 
because that emphasizes my weaknesses. And God has forgiven me and said, here is my strength. And then I find myself in these situations. I start comparing. And I start thinking, why is God blessing those people? They hurt me. They did this to me. And look at how they're living. They're happy. They're healthy. They're whole. They live better than I live. And what happens here? I forget about everything God's done for me. And then when I start thinking about my own sin, my own problems, what happens? Well, look at everyone here this morning. Everyone looks so happy and so put together, I'm the only one. And is that the truth? No. But I start comparing myself to you and what happens to my joy? And what happens to my focus on Jesus? I can't even take the supper because I'm so focused on me and I'm comparing me to you that I forget all about him. And then I find myself next being stuck, not letting go. I have to do something about this. I want to be happy. I want to be whole. I want to have a better life. And I try and I try and I try and I try. And boy, that makes it work, doesn't it? I get more tired physically, mentally, emotionally, and nothing ever seems to work. And why? Because God's told me I don't have it within me to make my life what it needs to be. I need someone to help me out. Go home this afternoon and read 2 Corinthians 12. For when I am weak, weakness, guess what? Then I am strong. When I acknowledge my weakness, then I have the strength I need to move forward because he becomes my strength. And then the real danger in not letting go is all of this becomes my idol that I'm so focused on that I start actually worshiping what I'm not letting go of. Because it consumes my mind and my heart. And all of a sudden, there's no room for Jesus. There's no room for his word. There's no room for prayer. There's no room for fellowship with you. Because I have my life of not letting go. And that not letting go becomes my God. And when Jesus got a hold of that woman caught in the act of adultery... After some conversation with her accusers and some conversation with her, what were his words to her? Woman, I don't condemn you. Go your way. Let go. And don't sin anymore. What you've been holding on to, I have dealt with. I've put it aside. You put it aside. And now walk in the freedom that I've given you. And Timothy, apparently as a young man, he would like to be timid. He liked to be shy. He liked to just step back into the background and just, you know how that goes. I don't want to be a bother to anyone, and I don't want anyone bothering me, and so I'll just be nice, and I'll just stand there and smile. And what did Paul say to Timothy? Timothy, <laughs> we came, and I laid my hands on you. And I prayed over you, and you have this wonderful <laughs> gift from God, and it's not about your strength, it's not about you, it's about God, and he has given you what? Love, power, and self-control. Let go. 
and experience what God wants you to experience. Anyone here today need to let go and let God? Anyone here today need to start living in faith and believing that God can make something out of my past? And he can. Amen, Johnny. This is why when we come together, we consider each other how to stir one another up to love and good works. We come together today, and a part of our being together is we come here to share our stories of victory from the week past so that we can encourage each other and help each other move forward and show by our example you can let go because that's why I'm here today. So my encouragement to you today If you're holding on, let go, because holding on will get you nothing but being stuck. And stuck does not describe the Christian life. I love this prayer I listen to every single morning. The person praying makes this statement with you, Lord. Every day is an adventure, not more of the same. Amen? But when I'm stuck, it's always the same. But when I'm living in faith, Every day, it's a brand new adventure. Now that life begins in one of two ways. If you've not yet repented of your sins, confessing Jesus as Lord and Son of God, you haven't been immersed, you haven't been baptized, you're stuck. You're caught up in your sin. And the only way to get unstuck is to listen to what Jesus tells you to do and say, Jesus, I do believe. I confess you as the Son of God. I want you to be Lord of my life. Get me to the water. And that's why this water is always ready. To give someone the opportunity to be immersed, sins washed away, come up out of that water a new creation in Christ, unstuck, living the life He wants you to live. So if you haven't done that today, do it before you leave here. That's what God wants for you. And you say, well, Michael, I have done that, but I've kind of gone back to stuck. Anyone here ever do that? Anyone here doing it right now? James says if we'll confess to one another, we can pray for one another, and we'll be healed, we'll be forgiven. Paul says, let your brothers and sisters know your burden, and we can bear one another's burdens in Christ. You're a brother or sister, but you find yourself stuck again. Share your life with us. Let us know. You can ask for prayers. You can say, I need to start again. And we'll do everything to stir you up to greater love and good works. And we'll walk the road with you and we'll all get unstuck together. And that's what this moment is about. Giving people a chance to let go and to move forward. And if that's your desire and you need help in doing that, Bill's chosen a song of encouragement. While we sing this song, if you'll come to the front, come right up here and have a seat. We'll find out what your need is, and we'll meet that need in just a moment. While we stand and sing, please come.
short psalm, one verse, and then we'll have our closing prayer. I am winged on the one strong. Jesus keep me from all wrong. All is satisfied and slow. And I walk near. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you again, Father, as we humbly bow before your throne. And we thank you for this time that we've had to gather here this morning to worship you, Father, to gather around the table in remembrance of the life and the sacrifice of Jesus. And to hear a portion of your word taught, Father. We pray that all we've done here this morning has encouraged us, that it has strengthened us with the knowledge of your word, it has brought us all closer to you and to each other, Father. And we just pray that all we've done here has been done in accordance with your will. And we want to take this time, Father, to pray for all those that are suffering through health issues, Father, whatever they may be. We just pray that that you will be there and let them remind, remind them that you will give them peace and comfort and that you will be there and to see them through this, Father. And... Uh, we pray that all of us here can also help them in any way that we can as they struggle through these issues, Father. And Father, we want to take this time on pray for Michael and Jordan as they minister to us. We pray that you keep their hearts pure, Father, and that you and that we all remind them how much we love them and appreciate them and that their work here is not in vain, Father. And we also want to pray for Johnny, Huey, and Stephen as they help us and serve you, as they shepherd over us, Father. And we just pray that they always look to you for guidance and all they do and that we will all be attentive to their needs and help them in any way we can so that the church that meets here in Ovella can serve you well, Father. And we just want to pray that as we prepare to depart here, Father, and we face them times of weakness, Father. And, and the father of all lies is fighting against us, Father. Just help us to remember that you are with us, that we can lean on you, that we can all lean on each other here, Father. And we don't have to fight him alone. And Father, as we pray that as Michael has reminded us here this morning that we can all just let go. We 
we will let go of all those things that hinder us from serving you, Father. And we thank you again for all that you do for us. We love you. And we offer this prayer to you in your son's name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.